Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to be making pastina. It is an Italian dish. My boyfriend's side of the family is Italian. This is a recipe I got from one of his family members. The pasta I'm showing you is a cena di pepe. Here's some beef stock, onion powder. I put the garlic salt to the side. We didn't need that. Um, a can of tomato paste, salt and pepper, onion, and celery stock. That is just a meat tenderizer. I got a ninja. I'm going to start off by chopping the onion in chunks and I'm going to throw that in my food processor. I'm going to do the same thing with the celery stalks and depending on your taste, you can add more onion, less onion and same with the celery. It's just all personal preference. I wouldn't overload it, um, but you could add more if you'd want to. I just use a small white onion because I'm only technically doing half a batch. I will have the recipe down in the description below. What I'm putting down in the description is only half a batch. So if you want to make a double batch, it makes a perfect amount for a good large family. So you can always double that. I forgot to grab the meat. So that's why I was just showing you. Um, I grabbed the meat and the knife that I was needed to cut it. Here I'm just chopping the celery. I don't know why I didn't leave the lid off, but you know, who knows. <laughs> um, here I'm just going to mince that up. Once I mince it up very fine, I'm going to throw it in a skillet. Um, you can hand chop it. I just prefer the processor because it minces it up super quick and I like it fine. I like to blend in with the soup and cook down in to the broth. Right there is just showing you the um, Parmesan. I forgot to get that out. And I'm just going to use a little bit of my spray olive oil and I'm going to coat my pan. I do prefer real olive oil, but that's all I had. I ran out of real olive oil yesterday, so I was stuck using that because that's all I had. Right now you can't see me, I'm just adding the celery and onions in. I'm gonna sear them a little bit and I'm going to caramelize them. And while that is caramelizing and cooking down a little bit, I'm going to prep the meat. I just got a whole chuck roast, it was on sale. You can buy beef stew cubes already pre-cut. I just got a chuck roast. You can use London broil, top, bottom round, doesn't matter. I, cho I chose and um, prefer chuck roast because you can see the nice fat marbling. Right here, I'm just gonna use a tenderizer and go through it a little bit. Just punctures multiple holes and it helps the juices get in there and everything else. Adding salt and pepper, especially the salt will help tenderize it even more. I am not gonna trim this fat on the meat. I am gonna leave it how it is because it is going to give me a nice, delicious broth. You don't want a piece of meat that is super, super fatty because um, you do want a good bit of meat in there. I actually would have preferred to have a little bit more meat than this. Here, I just cut out of the clip. I would go sharp my knife. Um, it was not cutting that well, but as you can see, I fixed that. A dull knife is dangerous. You always want to use a sharp knife. Here, I'm just cubing it up. And like I said, I'm not going to trim the fat. I just had to stop real quick and stir that. Um, but yeah, you want to keep the fat in there. Um, but you can just buy beef stews, you know, stew cubes. But I just like using chuck roast, um, personally. Um, so here I am after I cut and season it, I'm going to throw it in here and I'm going to sear this meat, um, for about three to five minutes on each side. You don't want it like crispy or anything like that. You just want to get it light brown. You want to sear it lightly on each side. Um, we're going to end up cooking this for hours. So with this recipe, you really want to start this earlier in the day. If you want to have it around a decent time for dinner, because this recipe in all, I cook it for about six hours on a low to medium rolling boil. So it's really important to start this earlier in the day. And here I am just coating a little bit more with the olive oil. It makes me cringe watching me spray it with that olive oil. Yes, I do use that, but I don't prefer to use like that olive oil spray for that. I usually just use that for like my eggs in the mornings sometimes, but that's what I had. So if you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Um, and I just want to say thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, this is just my new channel. I just want to share the random things I do in a day, cooking, fun things, crafts. I do a lot of random stuff. So I just thought it'd be fun to share that with you guys. Here, like you can see, I just seared it lightly. It is a light brown. Now that that is light brown, I am going, to, and it doesn't have to be fully you know brown like I said we're 
we're just gonna be cooking for hours so you don't want to overcook it in the skillet that's the last thing you want to do so just lightly sear it here I'm going to get my pot warmed up I'm bringing my beef stock over I'm using beef stock you can use beef broth beef, um, beef bone broth is even better uh, it's just more expensive and I just didn't want to go that route I feel like this turns out just as good, but if you want to be extra or have the extra money to spend, I would suggest doing the beef bone broth. Um, I only showed two containers here. I end up um, using some of my beef bouillon um, like at the end of this video before I put the pasta in um, because with condens you know, condensation steam, it kind of evaporates a little bit, your broth does. So I would suggest you getting three containers um, like I said, I have this recipe down in the description, so I suggest you getting three containers because even the next day you're going to want to add some broth into it because it will be absorbed into the pasta a little bit. Um, not by much, but it will. But after you cook it for like six hours, you know, some of the broth does evaporate. So I would say have three containers. Here I'm just showing you, you know, it's heated up now. You want to make sure it's heated up because we're going to be adding... Um, some of the tomato paste into this broth and you need it to be nice and hot so it melts into it i use about a half a can later down the road in this video i use like another um teaspoon and a half but here i'm just for now adding um half a can so i use almost three quarters of a can in all but right here i'm only using a half and you want to make sure that you use a whisk and you mix this in very well and I suggest, just to make it easier, it's not a big deal, but just to make it easier, you um, mix in your tomato paste. Before you add your meat mixture in that's in the skillet over there, you wanna make sure that you just mix it up real good because um, tomato paste is very thick and you don't want it to settle to the bottom and stick to the bottom and possibly burn. Um, so here I am, I'm just making sure it's really good and mixed up. Um, and I think I add a little bit more salt and pepper. I do that here and air there, you know, throughout me cooking. I don't always fully salt and pepper all at once in the beginning. I usually just do it over time and taste it here and there and see what it needs. Um, so here I am, I'm just scraping in, you know, of course, dropping some onions. I'll eventually pick it up and throw it in there because I don't like being wasteful. And the stove top was clean, so I was like, hey, whatever, I'll just throw it in there. Here I am just scraping out. I'm getting all those good bits and pieces of celery and onion. You wanna make sure that you use them. Don't wanna be wasteful. So now that I got that scraped in there, I'm gonna do throw that in the sink, pick my little mess up, and I'm gonna mix it up pretty well. Just separating everything. You wanna put the lid back on and you wanna to continue to put it at a rolling boil now that it's been real quick just wanted to say make sure you cook this on low medium heat at a simmer minutes. for five hours to 15 minutes before you add the pasta in you i had to correct how that nice the meat looks put the lid on there i think i was just actually checking at that point um halfway through but this is at five hours and 15 minutes can you see the difference in the broth it looks so good. You can see all that flavor and the juice from the fat. It looks so good. So here I was just checking it. At this point, it was five hours and 15 minutes. So I'm sorry. So here I got about like two, like two cups of water. Um, and I got my broth base, beef broth base. It's kind of like powdered, obviously you can see that. I always have this in my cabinet, but um, I always like adding this in. You don't have to. You can literally just use the same stuff as what I used earlier. Um, bone broth, beef stock broth from container. You don't have to use this. It's basically the same thing. I just always add a little bit more of that powder in that two cup ratio. And I just eyeball it. And I add a little bit more than what it says on that container. Because I feel like when you add this into your pot, it just gives it extra beefy flavor and not like an artificial kind. It just really steps up because 
beef broth and stuff like that can taste kind of bland in a sense to me, at least personally to me. But when you add that powder base in, it really steps up that flavor. And here is where I'm adding that extra teaspoon and a half. I was kind of contemplating. Um, it looks like I'm putting two teaspoons in it, but I'm not. I'm actually almost putting the rest of it back. And then I just like mix in that what's left on the spoon in there. So really about an extra teaspoon and a half added in there. Like I said earlier, um, and I'm gonna grab another spoon because ladles are good to scoop out your soup, but not really to mix it. And I know there's a chunk of that tomato paste in there. So I'm gonna make sure I get in there. You'll see me actually lift up the chunk of, I actually grab the um, tomato paste. So this is what I mean. Um, you, I'll lift it up here soon. You'll see that this is why you wanna, right there it is. You wanna make sure that you do actually grab that and mix that in good. And if I wanted to made sure, it would have just floated around there and probably scorched on the bottom. So I added that in and I used hot water. Yes, people were probably gonna be like, you don't put hot water in, well, it, I don't got time. I had to put it in. So I let that sear and come to a rolling boil as you can see. Um, I'm going to first add in a cup of Parmesan cheese. Um, I didn't add in more than that. I just stopped the mix them in that I added in the rest to make it a whole cup because I kind of just eyeball this part Like I said, it's kind of personal preference. I put down in the description, you know that I use a cup But you don't have to but I mean, that's what I usually use Even sometimes with a full batch like this is a half a batch technically like what I have down in the description But it's more than enough for two days of dinner um, the double batch I usually make which a what a family member gave me is because we have a big family. So um, usually I'll use around a cup of Parmesan in that double batch. So I actually technically added more cheese in this, but it was just as good and it doesn't overpower it at all. So I made sure to really whisk in that cheese and I waited a few minutes in between. Um, this video sped up a little bit so you couldn't tell, but um, I wanted to make sure that cheese was fully melted in and didn't settle with the bottom so it didn't burn. Um, then I added about um, a half a box here of the pasta but you can see it's very small and usually for a double batch I'll add a whole box um, and this isn't this is only a half a batch so it calls for like a half a box but it's all personal preference you could literally add a whole box of this I just prefer a little bit of um, broth I like some so I can dip my bread in it um, so I end up adding just a little bit more so I use about three-fourths of the box um, like I said, personal preference. I usually don't. I just wanted a little bit more pasta in there, not too much. Um, so right now at this point, even like, you know, when I was adding that beef bouillon in there like a few minutes ago, that was like the five hour point. Around this time, it's been about five hours, 15 minutes. And the last 45 minutes is when you wanna add that pasta in. You wanna keep it on a low rolling boil for the last 45 minutes and until when you hit that six hours then your you know your um, dinner should be done at this point I'm just sitting here I'm mix, mixing it real good make sure nothing sit on the bottom as you can see how well it's absorbing this is only like halfway through that 45 minutes I was just checking on it um, I had to speed up this video because YouTube wouldn't let you play after 15 minutes so here is the end result. I lost the clip, unfortunately, of me plating it, which makes me really sad because it was very satisfying. Here's the homemade bread I got. If you wanna see that video, that will be um, to load in tomorrow. Here I'm just cutting this up. Sorry for the angle. It was very hard to try to cut, like watch this through my phone. But look, you guys, you can just see how soft and tender that this meat is. I'm telling you, you do not wanna cook it any less than six hours. This recipe really is so delicious, you guys. I hope that you try this recipe and you really enjoy it. Please leave me a comment if you try it. Here's a little picture of my loaf that I made. It is olive oil bread. I thought it was so cute. This is the first time I ever tried cutting into my bread dough. I will have a recipe posted tomorrow on my channel, so keep an eye out. And I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have a good day. Please hit that like and subscribe and follow for more. Bye.